Tensions in the Middle East threaten to escalate further into a wider regional war after Israel and Hezbollah exchanged heavy fire over the weekend. The Iran-backed militant group launched hundreds of rockets and drones in retaliation for the assassination of a top commander in Beirut last month. Israel, though, reports it bombed dozens of Lebanese sites to thwart a larger attack. Both sides confirm only military targets were hit. The UN, Egypt and Jordan have urged restraint and called for a de-escalation of tensions. The U.S. again reiterated its ironclad commitment to Israel, saying its military was postured to help. The escalation throws in doubt efforts to reach a ceasefire deal for Gaza. In talks in Sunday, Hamas rejected the latest deal, citing unacceptable conditions introduced by Israel. Dr. Jean-Louis Saman, a senior research fellow with the Middle East Institute at the National University of Singapore, and he joins us on Asia First this morning. Dr. Saman, thanks very much, first of all, for joining us uh, on the show. I want to start by asking you about what Hezbollah chief uh, Hassan Nasrallah said Basically, that the retaliation for the killing of top military commander Fuad Shukar is complete and the group is now waiting and seeing. So, so what exactly are they waiting and watching for? And can we at this point say with some degree of confidence that a wider war has been averted, at least for now? Well, I mean, first of all, as you asked the question on uh, what was the, uh, the objective of Hezbollah, I think it was mostly about saving face. Uh, it was about restoring the uh, confidence uh, that Hezbollah is not going to just uh, accept Israel targeting its uh, leaders, as we saw uh, about a month ago. Uh, but uh, as the video just showed, uh, Hezbollah was reasonable or was cautious only to target military sites. So the, the damage inflicted on Israel was uh, re relatively uh, small. The question now uh, of a further escalation, I think it doesn't really relate to Hezbollah itself, but to Iran, uh, because we shouldn't forget that there was also the attack on Hamas political leader inside Tehran. And the big question is, uh, is this attack that we saw from Hezbollah yesterday one final chapter or the first chapter of another uh, a wave of attacks uh, that Iran or Iran's proxies in the region could launch in coming days. So that's, I think, the biggest unknown at this point. Mm. So uh, based on your read on their strategic objectives, timing and the scale of these strikes from both sides, have they accomplished what they hope to achieve? Well, yes and no. They, uh, what we see is that they achieved the, uh, uh, the um, let's say, the, the goals of, uh, again, demonstrating that uh, they, uh, they, they have force and that they're able to retaliate when the other side is attacking them. Uh, but beyond, let's say, tactical gains such as those, uh, we don't see at the moment yet any uh, sign of, let's say, clear de-escalation, which would mean uh, a, a peaceful process uh, that would need uh, to see both Israel and Hezbollah considering that war is over and it's it's time to, to stop this type of tit-for-tat attacks. Because we, we've seen yesterday a high uh, wave of attacks, uh, hundreds of rockets sent by Hezbollah and also airstrikes by Israel. But I doubt that in coming days this will mean no longer any small attacks on both sides. So the, the problem is, again, not just uh, the ceasefire uh, process, the ceasefire talks in Gaza, which plays a role, but also uh, the fact that uh, both Israel and Hezbollah right now are close to the borders of each other and not considering that there is a, a clear sign of uh, de-escalation. So that will remain uh, very volatile, I would say, in the coming weeks. Uh, Dr. Saman, to your point about uh, the the influence of, of Iran and also the, the kind of restraint we saw, reports indicate the weapons used were mostly short range. We talked about this. There were military targets and confined to the border area where hostilities have been taking place since October. I mean, what, what, does, this, what does it tell you about Hezbollah and its intentions and why do you think Hezbollah held back? Was it primarily Iran saying this is all you should do at this time? 
It is possible. We don't know for sure uh, the, uh, the the level of consultations, uh, but it, it is possible that uh, Iran asked and demanded uh, Hezbollah to uh, to be uh, restrained. Um, the, the it is also very possible that Hezbollah itself doesn't want uh, to go to war uh, with Israel because that would mean uh, a, a de devastation, level of damages to the country of Lebanon, which would be uh, uh, horrific uh, and something that would probably compromise the political uh, influence of Hezbollah inside uh, Lebanon. So in the end, it shows you that uh, from a military point of view, strictly at the military level, uh, Israel still enjoys what we would call escalation dominance, meaning that they are able in a way to impose the, the pace and the, uh, uh, the, the, the level of escalation we see. That was already the case in previous months. This is still uh, the case, at least with Hezbollah. But again, I'd be cautious by saying that we may see uh, further actions in coming days, maybe from another front, maybe uh, coming from the Houthis in Yemen, maybe from Iraq, uh, where we have uh, Iranian militias. So we'll see if this is still the case uh, with regards to this restraint in coming days. Dr. Salman, how do you think the recent strikes will affect the progress of the ongoing ceasefire negotiations, especially with Hamas officials now saying their delegation has left Cairo? Well, this is this is a, a very difficult uh, question. I would say that uh, the, um, the Israel Hezbollah uh, tensions, in some ways, are disconnected from uh, the ceasefire talks, and that's at least what the uh, Israelis have been trying to say. That uh, we saw the, the, the Israeli delegation uh, going to Cairo without uh, considering that the uh, ongoing escalation uh, with Hezbollah could compromise the talks. My personal opinion is that uh, the talks between Israel and Hamas uh, are uh, at, the, at this point undermined mostly by the demands of both sides and demands which have been changing uh, very regularly. And we see uh, in the last days that uh, this, this was mostly about Israelis' demand to uh, to be in charge of the flow of uh, the, uh, the the Palestinian population across the Gaza Strip. Uh, the Israelis want also to control the so-called Philadelphia Corridor, which is this border area between Gaza and Egypt, because they fear that there could be a smuggling of uh, a rocket, smuggling of military capability through that area. And Hamas uh, rejects uh, those demands. So this is less to do with, let's say, the Israel-Hezbollah escalation we saw in the last days, but rather very specific issues which relate to the dispute between Israel and Hamas. Having said that, again, the, the fact that you have this ongoing escalation uh, in the north uh, between Israel and Hezbollah definitely doesn't help uh, with the, to the environment, the diplomatic environment for the talks between Israel and Hamas. Dr. Saman, very quickly, has Joe Biden's withdrawal from the U.S. presidential race altered the dynamics of the ongoing conflict? I mean, he's still the commander in chief of the U.S. military, at least for the next five months. So, you know, he doesn't have to worry about the far left or uncommitted voters anymore. Has that changed anything in the sense that maybe is emboldened Benjamin Netanyahu, for example? So far, there's no sign that uh, the uh, U.S. policy would be changed either at the diplomatic or the military level. Uh, I mean, we actually see a lot of continuity uh, since the war started uh, beyond mere rhetoric uh, that is uh, calling for uh, con concerns uh, regarding the humanitarian uh, uh, relief, uh, the, the, the desire of the U.S. Uh, that the Israelis uh, take more into consideration. Uh, the Palestinian civilians. But beyond that, when you look at the military deployments, when you look at the uh, the military supplies to Israel and the diplomatic support to the Israeli side in the ceasefire talks, I don't see any change. Uh, this may, uh, this if there was a change, I think uh, this would be less about, let's say, the, the, the ongoing uh, uh, primaries in the US, but might be because of, uh, if we see an escalation uh, the uh, the Biden administration and also the Kamala Harris team 
uh, would not uh, would not want to show any sign of weakness vis-a-vis -vis the the Trump presidency or the Trump campaign. Uh, I'm sure that Donald Trump would like uh, to use any sign of escalation as a sign that this is uh, the U.S. showing uh, weakness and the Iranians using that. But so far, we don't see any change uh, in the U.S. policy there. Understood. Dr. Saman, thank you very much. We have to leave it there. Dr. Jean-Louis Saman is from the National University of Singapore. And you can read more about the tensions in the Middle East on our website, cna.asia, including this article on the role Iran plays in the ongoing conflict.